say here we go again. Here we go again. It's being this the leftovers from last night, y'all. So I can say get ready to get your praise on the day. The scripture reading today will be coming from Corinthians chapter 5 verse 16 and it reads, but I say walk by the spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come about here as humble hearts again, Lord, thanking you for last night's laying down, Lord, and this morning's rise. Heavenly Father, knowing we've done nothing good or great, but you, being a God of mercy, Heavenly Father, you saw fit to leave us here, and we thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you're doing, what you have done, and what you will do in our lives. Heavenly Father, most of all, we thank you for the sacrifice of your son, for the sacrifice of finished work on the cross on behalf of our on behalf of us and our sins, Heavenly Father, would we may be come become closer to him. Heavenly Father, we lift up those who are bereaved this morning. Continue to be with them, have mercy on them. We also want to lift up those who are sick and, and shut in. Heavenly Father, continue to give them the strength they need. Heavenly Father, and as, as always, continue to watch over our children and keep them safe from danger, seen and unseen. And Heavenly Father, as we continue further into this service, we pray what we do will be pleasing and acceptable, acceptable in your sight. We pray this prayer in our Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let me get up here and get out of the way quickly. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Are y'all blessed to be in the house of God this morning? Let's give God that hand clap of praise. Um, as Brother Hunter mentioned, if you, if you were not here last night, um, I don't even know how to tell you, you missed a treat. You missed a whole meal. Uh, and if you like me, I like to eat, so I, I hate it for you. But we're going to try to do a, a somewhat rendition of that again today. Y'all going to have to help us out, though, right? Y'all come into God's house to give him some praise? All right, all right. Well, I'm going to, what's up, Dale? Uh, I'm going to call up a son of this church. Uh, y'all, y'all see the crest. Y'all know him real well. David, come on up, man. Give us one. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you all. 100 years, 100 years. We're going to sing, uh, You Are My Strength, You Are My Strength. You are my strength, 
Praise him. (laughs) 
I love to praise Him. You know that. Well, I love to praise Him. You know that. Anybody here love to praise Him? You know that I love. Well, you know that. Come on up, Ro. Come on up, Ro. Brother Roland May, I introduced him to y'all last night. God has smiled on me. He has set me. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Church, say amen. amen. What's going on, family? You know, you live a little bit differently when you know that the victory is already won. You live a little bit differently and you move a little bit differently when you don't know, when you, excuse me, when you do know that you already got an A on the test. And it's not because of the power that's within you. It's because the victory belongs to Jesus, and he already won. They telling me to switch mics just for a second. So we're going to sing Victory Belongs to Jesus. Y'all ready to sing that?
testify that yes and who can stand who can stand against the Lord nobody can even though some have tried but no one will no one will say who can stand nobody can and no Yes. 
victory belongs to him, say amen. amen. Because of whatever battle you're going through, the victory belongs in him. Yeah. Be it your battle with cancer, be it your battle with depression, or TXU because they keep sending you that expensive light bill. Understand the victory belongs in him. The battle is already won. I had to fan this microphone off with this 100 year anniversary fan because whoo, it's hot here this morning. It's kind of cool outside, but it's nice and spiritually warm in here. Big shout out to everyone who has participated in our service. <laughs> Big shout out to David. He came in here. I, as soon as I see him, I said, I'm going to get me a high note today, baby. Big shout out to Will for killing it. Scat Pack is in the building. All the way from Alabama. He even brought his girlfriend, SRT, with him. And they are here, and they are bringing it. Amen. That's what's up. Hey. This plane almost landing. It's almost done. We are we almost at our final destination, and we have been on a spiritual high all of March. Amen. Amen. It's been a it's been a good year. This is, like I said, this is our year. This is our year. And last night, hold on, let me start over. Welcome to Cedar Crest TV. We appreciate you tuning in. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you are here with us, and we truly appreciate it. You at home, if you are at home. Ain't nothing wrong with being at home, but you missing out being here in the house of the Lord and getting these spiritual, up different spiritual worship blessings that are coming down. So uh, back to what I was saying last night, last night, hey, if you missed out, you missed out. Now, you don't have to completely miss out. If you subscribe to our YouTube page, you got a notification about last night. And you watched it like I did at my job. And the live was live last night. The, the musical, it was. I mean, the, the, hey, the highlight of the night, there's two highlights. I'm not going to spoil, there's three. I'm not going to spoil it completely for you. You can go back and watch it to each his own. There's three highlights. One I won't say, to see the gospel hour, of course, scene. Hey. Growing up as a kid, the Gospel Hour course was my alarm clock. My mom woke up at 6.30 playing the Gospel Hour along with Brother Northcutt on the radio to wake us up early in the morning. So to see them, and, and it felt good to see them. But Sister Terry Mays. You heard the ooh, so you already know. Sister Terry Mays, she told it up. Now, don't get me wrong. Truth, y'all did y'all thing. Y'all did y'all thing. Y'all did y'all thing. 
But Sister Terry Mays, she didn't sing. She sang. She sang. She sang. So, hey, we are rolling, we are rocking, and we only have two more big events left. Our big event today is our 100 Homecoming Celebration. <laughs> immediately, immediately following service, we're going to go right into eating dinner, fellowship, and then we're going to have our 2 p.m. program. I'm not going to tell you what they're serving, but understand this. You, I ain't got to tell you because you can smell it in the back. If you at home, you can still smell it because it's delicious. Once that door opens, it's this aroma is going to hit you that's so strong that your nostrils are going to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for allowing me to smell. And then next week is our Waydell Nixon family and friends. That, hey, invite your family, invite your friends, invite people, your coworkers. This is the day we're going to invite our family and friends that day. We're going to have a fellowship that day. That is a special day for us, for family and friends. You got some coworkers and family that ain't been here in a while, some family that should be here. Invite them for next week. All right? Amen? And a quick reminder, we do have a midweek live service on uh, March 27th. Um, once again, our live services have been, have been pretty good. They've been in service. We've been here. The numbers have been good. We want our numbers to go up on Wednesday night service. Amen? And the minister for that evening is Dr. Doolin. So, hey, let's come on out. Midweek service, and let's come and celebrate and, and praise God on a Wednesday night this March. Without further ado, oh yeah, also, once again, these are free. You can take these home. If you see one and you fanning yourself because you're hitting the spirit, take it home with you because I know this summer's going to be hot. And there's some down here in the front. All right? Good. Brother Morris. Good morning. Repeat after me. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice, be glad in it, that give God thanks, give him big praise. Oh, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord on a Sunday morning? Amen. The S-O-N is shining inside this place. And uh, we are just grateful for all that the Lord has done for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way and blessing us to come to this place to celebrate and worship God uh, on uh, on this this morning. Listen, uh, without repeating a lot of what has already been said, we just want to extend uh, our welcome on behalf of the leadership, the elders and minister here of the Cedar Crest Church for all of you uh, who are especially our guests for coming our way and sharing in this celebration with us. It's just good to look out and see so many uh, faces from our sister congregations and members of our church and those we hadn't seen in a while. It's just good to look out and you look good. Amen. You all look good. Well, most of you look good. No, I'm kidding. You all, you look good. You're smiling. You look like you want to be here. Uh, and we are just thankful to God. This is all about the Lord. Amen. This is not about us. This is not about me and you. This is about getting God glory and celebrating him for 100 years, a century, a century. 100 years of ministry and God's faithfulness in his use of us, including us in his plan uh, as a congregation and even as, as a city. Uh, just a few things I want to uh, share and want to reiterate with you and, and want to make a point of a couple of things to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, while Before we do that, though, we do want to continue to be mindful uh, uh, of those in our church who uh, are in need of prayer. We want to continue to lift up the family of Sister Yolanda Fields. Uh, we want to call her by name uh, as she uh, is in a particular season, she and her family. Uh, we want to keep, keep her in our prayers. Uh, and we also want to keep uh, Sister Thomas, our matriarch. Amen. It was so good to look up on that screen and see and see her. I, I went out to see her, uh, I think it might have been Thursday or Friday of last week, and, she, and she's her same old self. As for all that she's been through, uh, her spirits are still high, and her mind is as clear as anybody's. Sister Thomas can remember stuff that all of us have forgotten. Uh, and we just thank God for, for that. 
and she's her recovery is moving in the right direction and we want to uh, pray for those who are taking good care of her sister thomas is in good hands uh, and we, we thank those angels that are that are providing good care for her. And there are others in our congregation that we want to keep in our our prayer as well. We also want to um, say a couple of other things uh, with regard to our um, our homecoming uh, meal. Uh, Dr. Albert Rice and his team has done an absolutely phenomenal job. And we're going to even wrap Brother Hodridge into that. He's, he's, been, <laughs> he's been working with the team as well. I'm saying all that to say, make sure you say thank you as you go through that line. Amen? If that's not the piece of chicken you want. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, but they've been working hard, and I promise you, it's a meal that won't disappoint, all right? And so uh, following our meal, the program will begin at 2.30, not 2 o'clock, 2.30. And we're doing that to try to accommodate as many people uh, uh, that are coming to, to fellowship with us uh, uh, in the meal after morning service. So please, please make note of that. And don't go home. Hang around here, fellowship, get to know someone. Uh, let's just make make a, a, a day of this. We won't be here all afternoon. We've got a number, uh, a couple of groups that I know of that are will be with he, be here with us. We've got uh, some congregational singing, and of course, uh, our speaker will come back with uh, a message uh, uh, in the uh, the afternoon as well. So make sure that you are you're here for that. Our Wednesday night service next Wednesday or this coming Wednesday. Uh, will be not just live, but it will be in person. And so we encourage you, if you are, especially if you are a member of this congregation, but if if you are uh, attend somewhere else and aren't sure where you're going to go Wednesday night, uh, we encourage you to come and to worship with us in person. Uh, but you can also view the service uh, online. And again, Dr. Rodney Doolin of the Central Point Congregation is going to be here, uh, and we know what he does. He's going to give a mighty word on uh, on on this coming uh, Wednesday. And of course, again, our family and friends day, that's also what we call Easter, uh, but we do encourage you to come out. We, what we've tried to do just very briefly in this, in this centennial celebration is be very deliberate uh, about honoring the key people. And num we understand that everyone's vital and everyone's important. Uh, it's not about just the preachers, and it's not just about the elders and the shepherds, but but we do want to give honor where honor is due. Amen. That's that's biblical. Amen. And and uh, we we wanted to to be careful to to honor those the men of God, especially in their families who have labored with this congregation. And so I'm thankful that that as a as a church we are we are honoring and celebrating the work of the Nixon family in this church. And we want to come out in big numbers in in support uh, in support of that. I can't say enough about the musical on last night. It was super outstanding, uh, and um, you know they were asking me to sing, but I was like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to steal nobody's shine. Nobody want to come up after me. So you know, I just kind of left it alone. You know, but uh, but 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 maybe at the 200th, I'm going to do it, okay? I promise you, I promise you, at the 200th, I'm going to get up, okay? Y'all hold me to it now, all right? Y'all help me remember, at the 200th, I'm going <laughs> to... Oh, my goodness. Y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. But we do thank the team for doing a great job, our media team, everyone, our ushers, greeters, everyone for making this whole month what it has, has been. Um, I'm forgetting something, I know I am, but while I'm here, uh, I want to also, before we worship and celebrate God in our giving, I want to take this opportunity to present to some and introduce to others uh, our, the man of God uh, for, this, for this morning. Uh, we've been anticipating this day for a long time, uh, and I'm excited about what God is going to do. We initially invited 
uh, two uh, ministers to come. They're friends, and they can preach, and they can sing, and carry on, and do all of that stuff. And so we were excited about having them both here together in the person of Dr. Blakeney and Dr. Baldry. Unfortunately, due to circumstances outside of Dr. Blakeney's control, he was not able to be here uh, with us this weekend. He desperately wants to be here. But again, uh, due to circumstances that are beyond his control, he simply could not, uh, could not be here. And that's okay. We understand that. But we celebrate God for the man of God who sits in this chair behind us. Let's make some noise and let's give God praise for this man of God, uh, Dr. Daryl Bowdry. Many of us know Brother Bowdry. When we when we thought about who would help make this 100th anniversary celebration special, who who was fitting. Uh, and who could deliver Brother Bowdry was one of the men that came to mind, and that's why he's here this, this morning. We thank God for his gifts. Uh, we thank God for his familiarity with our brotherhood. If there's anything you want to know about the Church of Christ, Brother Dr. Daryl Bowdry is a walking encyclopedia of the Church of Christ, and we thank the Lord for the experiences that God has given him uh, and for his recall, and we just know that he's a fitting person uh, for this for this occasion. Uh, his family is well loved and known throughout our brotherhood. Dr. Bowdry, if you are less familiar with him, uh, is is most known in this area for his longevity—16 years with the North Tenaha Church of Christ in Tyler, Texas. Let's celebrate God for 16 years at North Tenaha. And I was shocked to hear him say for the last 26 years, he has been the minister of the South Central Church there in Tyler as well. And so over 40 years of ministry in the same area. And we are thankful to God for that. I appreciate him for his example, uh, for his personality, for the man that he is, for his civic engagement. Uh, I'm, I'm always encouraged by men of God who understand that uh, their ministry does not only uh, encompass the four walls of the congregation, but his ministry is outside in the streets and in the community. And Dr. Bowdry has been one who's ex exemplified that throughout his ministry, served in a number of civic capacities there in the East Texas area, and we just thank God for him, and we're glad he's in the house this morning. But the question is, are you ready to receive a word from the Lord? Amen. Did you come ready to receive a word? Uh, you're not going to get if you don't come expecting to receive. But, but if you come expecting to receive a word, surely the Lord will use the man of God to do that. And so we're excited about that. Listen, I'm going to get out of the way. It's time for us to celebrate the Lord uh, with our, our means, with what God has placed in our possession. And we encourage everybody who's in the house, especially if you're a member of our church, to take advantage of the many giving options that you have available to you. If you're watching online, you should see those options on the screen. Uh, and we encourage you to, to take advantage of those, those uh, giving options now. In, in, the, in the spirit of the old preachers, uh, we're going to encourage one of these young men to come with a good giving song. We got a good giving song. Amen. We're going to have a good giving song. And listen, we encourage you right now, wherever you are, whoever you are, celebrate God in your giving while we celebrate the Lord in song. There are some things I may not know. And there are some places I I can't go. Just like 
but since the day. excellent is your name in all of the earth. All of creation, Father, bows before you because you're real, because you're awesome, because you're holy. You're our provider and source of all things good. So, Father God, we thank you for this August privilege and opportunity to reflect your character in our giving. We pray that every offering, every sacrifice that has been lifted, has been given, with the right spirit and the right heart. We pray that it will be used uh, to your glory and your honor and the continuation of your mission and your calling for us upon this earth. In the name of your son, Jesus, we offer this prayer that all who believe and agree say amen, amen. and amen. So I'm going to get up and get out of the way again as we prepare our hearts, our bodies, and minds for communion. Uh, for many of y'all that were here last week, I told you, uh, we had some stewing in the pot. And, uh, oh, no, we was actually making cookies. I forgot what it was, what else we were making. Uh, but uh, while I was boiling the water, uh, we dropped off JL last week. And y'all seemed to, to, to really enjoy worship service. He seemed to really take us on up. But the plane didn't just drop JL off. It dropped off another brother of mine. Uh, and for you all who don't know, uh, we have, let me do this first. We've had David Robinson. Y'all know Jay. Y'all know Austin. Uh, my brothers, Roland and Will. Uh, and now we got one of my other brothers in the house, Malcolm Himes. <laughs> Come on up. Uh, for y'all don't know Malcolm, uh, he, can, he, he can sing. He can sing. He can sing. Oh, my, I'm sorry. So look at that. Look at that. He could sing, y'all. Malcolm Hines. Good morning. It's been a while since I've been here, but it's good to see all of you on this morning. He is Lord. Do you believe that Jesus is Lord? He's your Redeemer. He's your Master. He is Lord. He is Lord. Oh. 
Jesus Christ is Lord. tells us when the hour came he reclined at the table and the apostles with him and he said to them I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer for I say to you I should not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God and when he had taken the cup and given thanks he said take this and share it amongst yourselves for I say to you I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the kingdom of God comes and when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is being given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant of my blood. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Father God in heaven, we are truly thankful and truly blessed to be before you at this time. We're thankful, Father, for the great sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. We pray, Father, that as we commune, we will take this bread that represents our Lord and Savior's broken body and the cup that represents the blood that he shed, that we will take it in a manner that will be pleasing to your sight. Pray, Father, that we will examine our hearts and our minds and deem ourselves worthy to partake of this communion. In Jesus Christ's heavenly name we pray. Amen. Let us commune together. The church say amen. amen. This concludes our communion. My Savior, come to earth and to the humble God. Yes. 
coming up behind this man. I don't know why he did that. He already know what it is. But we gonna sing. Lord, 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 I want you to help me. Lord, 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 I want you to help me. I want you to help me. you without you, Jesus, to help me. I want you to help me on my journey. Please, Lord. Help me on my way. Hey, 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 hey. Lord, 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 Lord. Hey, you know my body, but my faith. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. 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 
Lord, 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 I want you to help me. Sometimes you're the only friend I have, sweet Jesus. Help me. I want you to help me on my journey. Please, Lord. Help me on my way. Yeah. following me. What are you talking about? I don't know why he did that. That's the reason why. <sighs> yes, sir. I'm going to sing a little bit and get out your way so you can go ahead and preach, Doc. Calling on you. All right. I took all my breath on that song. I didn't need no mic. Yeah. I feel like praising, praising him. Oh, I feel like praising, praising him. Praise him in the morning, praise him in the morning, all night long. Should I feel? Like praising, praising him, said that I feel, said that I feel like praising, praising him. Oh, 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 I feel like praising, praising him. Go on and praise him, I praise him in the morning, all night long. Yeah, I feel like praising, praising him. You all to praise the Lord said you all to praise the Lord while you have the chance while you have the chance and you all to praise the Lord while you go on and praise him praise him in the morning all night long so that I'm gonna be like praising praising him you all to praise the Lord said and you all to praise the Lord while you have the chance while the blood is running warm in your veins I'm here I you have the chance I'm going to praise him and all night long yeah said I feel like praising and praising him 
I feel like praising him. Said I feel like praising, praising him. Oh, I feel like praising, praising him. I praise him in the morning and all night long. Said I feel like praising. If all you haters out there said, if you don't want to praise the Lord, don't you hinder me. Oh, if you don't, Lord, don't you hinder me. Yeah. Said, I'm going to praise him in the morning. All night long. Anybody feel like, anybody feel like praising, praising him. Yeah. And if you don't want to praise the Lord, don't you hinder got a hole in it. My goodness, my goodness. That's what it's going to be like in heaven. As some of y'all that didn't get your praise on yet, you're going to have a tough time up there. Amen. I just want to thank God for waking me up this morning. starting me on my way. Not because I'm so worthy or so good, but because God's so good to me. I want to thank the leadership of this church, Brother Jonathan Morrison. Amen. Great gospel preacher. 
a great, great administrator of God's people and the elders for this, for this golden invitation to come and celebrate with the crest. 100 years. My, my, my. When I was coming up, Cedar Crest was the mothership. <laughs> the mother church. Look, I, I, I remember when y'all when, when were at Ninth Street. Anybody here remember Ninth Street? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember when, when, when you came into this building. I was six years old. Uh, it was the same year that Dallas killed President Kennedy. It was a, it was a lot happened that year. And and I, and I can I can I'm 66 now, by the way. I, I, I I'm I'm just honored to be. This is one of those churches where you, I used to sit in the audience and look up at the pulpit and I never dreamed that one day I'd be standing in it. Of course, back then it looked a lot bigger than it is. That's because I was so little. But it's a it's a pleasure. It's a it's certainly a milestone that not many of our churches get to get to observe. And get to, it ought to be celebrated, and it ought to serve as a catapult for years for years to come. More about that this afternoon. But if you Brought your Bibles. I have mine. Let's turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 6. Very familiar passage that most of us could quote in our sleep. I tell you, we've had a time this morning. It's been to listen, y'all have sung. This has been some singing. I thought I thought y'all were gonna sing my time away, but I I'm, I'm <laughs> I, I ain't going to be long, but I ain't going to sit down until I'm through. Uh, in, in, John, in John chapter 6 and verse number, number 60. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, turned, verse 66, and walked with him no more. Verse 67, then Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, y'all know this, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, did I not choose you, the twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. I want to talk about the difference between a fan and a follower. The difference between a fan and a follower. A man by the name of Charles Moore and his family had just moved into a new community. And Charlie wanted to make friends. So he joined the local softball league. In the opening game, Charlie took his family to the game. and He went to join his team while his family was seated in the bleachers. It was Charlie's turn to bat, and he got up to bat, 
set his feet, squared his shoulders, and as the ball came across the plate, old Charlie swung at it, and he missed it by a mile. There was a voice in the stands that hollered out, you can do it, Mr. Moore. So the second time, Charlie was determined, and the ball came, and he swung even wilder than he had the first time, and he missed it. And the voice came out of the stands and said, you can do it, Mr. Moore. So the third pitch came, and Charlie swung again, and there was this voice that came after he missed it, saying, that's okay. Mr. Moore. Well, when the family got back in the station wagon and was heading up the road, the father looked in his rearview mirror and he asked his son, he said, son, was that you hollering at me from the stands? And he said, yeah, daddy, that was me. He said, well, I appreciate your encouragement and everything, but why, why did you address me as Mr. Moore? He said, well, I wanted you to do good, but once I saw how you were swinging, I didn't want nobody to know you were kin to me. <laughs> Fans are like that. <laughs> Fans are folk who only come to church. They really don't do much for Jesus because they have other priorities. They're happy to show up every once in a while and shout encouragement at the church, but they really don't act like they're related to Christ. Oh, they'll shout out, you can do it, Jesus. Look at God. Watch God work. But look at their lives, and you know there's a difference between a fan and a follower. A fan just shows up, and they'll stay as long as it benefits them, but if it doesn't do them any good to hang around, they're gone. Often they get so easily offended if they don't get their own way. When they don't get their own way, do you know what they do? They act just like fans, just like fans at a basketball or a football game. If their team starts losing just a little bit, and it doesn't seem like there's any room for them to catch up. What did they do? The stands start emptying. People start standing up and getting to their cars to try to get there before the crowd because they just don't know how to stay. That's what happened in John 6. The Bible says from this time, Many of his disciples turned and walked with him no more. They no longer followed Jesus. But why did they stop following Jesus? They stopped following because he said something that they didn't like. Oh, help me in here. Because Jesus had offended them. They were pushed beyond their comfort zone. And so they left and they didn't come back. You see, the crowd was not there to follow Jesus. In fact, they weren't there for Jesus at all. They were there for what Jesus could do for them. Uh, you, if you remember just a day or, or two before this uh, incident, Jesus had been teaching to a huge crowd, and the text tells us that there were 5,000 men plus women and children, and Jesus began to perceive that they were getting a little hungry. Uh, so rather than preach to them with all those nocturnal rumblings in their abdomens, he decided that he'd have a break and that he'd cater a meal for them. Y'all know this? Uh, starting with two fish and five loaves. And the, you know the story how Jesus fed the entire multitude and that there were 12 baskets left over. Now, the crowd was more impressed with the baskets than they were with the fish. Uh, they, they were more impressed by the fact, and that was impressive, that you start off with two fish and five loaves and you end up with 12 baskets full of food. 
And, and what did they do? They, they, they looked at Jesus and they decided they wanted to make him king. Uh, anybody that can feed us like this deserves to be president. You know, it don't take too much for some folk. Uh, uh, some, uh, they, 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 uh, I've, heard some, I've heard some black folk uh, uh, talking about, well, when Trump was president, uh, we at least got that $1,500. Well, $1,500 ain't nothing. It was gone before you got to Walmart. And all it took for these folk was a little fish and a few chips, and they were ready. They, they, wanted, they wanted to make Jesus the king. Uh, the Bible says they were going to take him by force. Come here. You finna be our king. Why? Because you fed us. And it's something about food and people. I mean, it's something about, ain't y'all feeding today? Yeah, I, I hate to tell you, but some of these folk, they, they, they only came for the food. I mean, the singing was all right and the preaching was all right, but Lord have mercy. They, they really came for the food. I remember around here in Dallas when uh, uh, there were some people that they, they, they were able to, 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 to get free food every Sunday because all they did was look at the calendar and see whose homecoming it was. And, and it would start out with Hatcher Street because they had the homecoming on the first Sunday in March. And, and, it, 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 and it, would, it, would go, it would go from the See, y'all used to be in May. Amen. But there were those that would come on in May. And the only reason they were coming was to get that chicken, peas, and corn. Say amen when you can. Because if you feed me, I'll follow you anywhere. You ain't even got to say, come on, let's eat. Just look like you going to eat. I'm right there with you. It's something about food that makes people act a little crazy. Amen. Amen. I, I, listen, I, I ain't talking about nobody. They done fixed this food. Don't let me shame you. Y'all go on and stay. You heard the preacher. He said, say thank you. We don't even read here where they said thank you. They just wanted some more. So they kept following Jesus. I said, I said they kept following Jesus. And Jesus realizing that, that uh, they weren't really there for the right reason, Jesus said, well, I'll show them something. I'll cut off their meal ticket. I'll, 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 I'll cut off the meal ticket. So Jesus said, I'm not giving you nothing else. See, they done followed the man, they're, they're a, a mob. Worse than January 6th. They, they're about to mob Jesus and mow him down. He got in a boat. They got on the shore and started running, keeping up with the boat. Why? They was at food. It was at food. And the Bible says that they followed him no more. They no longer followed him. But why did they stop? Because Jesus had offended them. Because he... He, he told them, I'm not going to give you. You're not following me for the real reason. You're following me because of the fishers, the fishes, and the bread. Well, what does a follower look like? What's the difference between a fan and a follower? Well, a follower is the type that means it when they sing and say, wherever he leads me, I'll follow. A follower understands that he doesn't always lead you down a sunlit path. But sometimes it's dark and you can't see the road and you don't know your way. But a follower will follow him. Follow him. Y'all remember that old song we used to sing it? It's one of them old songs from the old church. Will ye leave? Come on. Me, I will. Put some bottom in it there. Where he leads me, I will follow. Y'all know it. Where he Oh, 
Oh yeah, my, yeah, oh yeah. my. Now, now, now that's how followers sing it, but that ain't how fans sing it. Fans sing it. I'll go with you till the summer. Then I got places to go and things to do and people to see. I'll go with you till the winter. Baby, you know I got these allergies and I, I, my blood is so thin I can't make it. Don't you preach about my money or I'll shut down, shut down. All oh, the way. There's a difference between a fan and a follower. You see, fans go to church to experience the faith. A follower goes to experience faith. A fan goes to experience rituals. See, the rituals make them feel religious. But the rituals don't make any difference in how they live. Followers go to church to experience Jesus. And that experience of touching Jesus during worship changes them. That, that's why you can feel like praising him when you don't feel good. Uh, uh, he didn't say praise him when you're not aching. He said he, he wants you to praise him at every turn. Uh, for fans, the spiritual connotations of worship are hard to grasp. That's why Jesus, Jesus told the fan-filled crowds, he told them, I am the living bread. He was trying to get them to see something. They were sitting there chewing that bread that he had just uh, made for them and, and, and choking on that fish. And he began to, he said, look here, look at that. What you're eating is nothing. You've got to eat of me for I am the living bread. Whoops. What did he say that for? Because some folk in the church just got a bad understanding. When he said that you're going to have to eat my flesh and drink my blood, them folks said, whoop, what did he say? What, what did he say? Child, you heard him just like I did. Sound like he said, we got to eat his flesh and drink it. Well, the nerve of him. They still eating his food. And probably somebody went back for seconds. I see sister so-and-so over there done got some aluminum foil. She going to take a plate home. <laughs> but they don't want to listen to what the Lord. <laughs> they don't want to listen to what the Lord has to say. They so caught up in the food that they think the Lord is talking about literally eat his flesh and drink his blood. And while they're sitting there eating his food, they're saying to themselves, I'll never do it. I'll never do it. But see, they thought Jesus was speaking literally and he was speaking figuratively. And see, that's what's wrong with a whole lot of us. We look at scriptures and we take them figuratively without looking at the context and studying what it's all about. Like when Jesus says, if your right eye offends you, pluck it out. He said, if your, if your right arm offends you, cut it off. Now, you know he wasn't talking Literal, because if it was, there'd be a church full of one-eyed, one-armed folks sitting up in here right now. Some of you wouldn't have no arms. He was speaking figuratively, and he wasn't even talking about communion. He was talking about our experience with him. He was, he was talking about the purpose of, of, even, of even coming to the Lord's house to worship is to feed on him. You, 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 if we are his followers, the only way you get strength is by feeding on Jesus. You got to feed on the word. You got to feed on the fellowship. Some of y'all looking at me like a cow looking at last year's calf, but it's right in there. 
I, I, I said it's right anyhow. He, he, he's saying that we come, we come together for the purpose of, and I got I to gotta say something to the online folk because I know there's some folk that are really uh, ailing and sick and cannot make it, but some of y'all, where's the camera at to feed the light? There's some of y'all, there's some of y'all that could be here. And I, and I don't understand it. I see him at the Walmart. I see them at the grocery store. I, I, I walk into a restaurant and they already sitting at the table and ain't even got no mask on. But when it comes to the church, they ain't found their way back to the church yet because they're scared of COVID. Look, look, you work with nasty folk. Uh, you, 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 you bowl with nasty folk. Some of you live with nasty folk. And you act like this little time we spend out here is going to hurt you and it's going gonna, it's gonna to ruin your health. Are you a fan? Are you a follower? Without the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, nothing else we do makes any difference. Take him off the cross. What else do we have? We have a building full of empty people. We're no different than a Sunday club. But when you know he died for you, when you know that he sustains you, when you know that without him in your life, you would be like a ship without a sail, when you understand the pure ramifications of the fact that he did get up with all power in his hand, then you understand the precept of being not a fan, but a follower. 100 years in, this church was not built off of fans. It was not sustained off of fans. It did not develop the reputation of being a stalwart in the brotherhood because of fans. Oh, don't get me wrong. There were those here that were fans. But you had so many committed followers that the uncommitted fans didn't make any difference. Lo and behold, things have changed in every church. I said in every church. And, you know, we let, we, let, we, we let corona run us crazy. We did. You know, I, I admit we was all scared at first. Amen. I, Scared going out in public. If, if, if Lord, if Lord knows you were scared to cough. <laughs> you tried to mu muzzle coughs all you could, because every time you cough, everybody turn around and look at you. Hey. That's true too. Let somebody get to hacking too much around me now. Nah, I get to. <laughs> I pull my mask out of nowhere. <laughs> but, 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 but if you're going to let that run you away, you're going to let that stop you from being a follower of Christ. So what you're saying is I'll follow him till it comes a sickness. Have you not read the word where it says that there will come pestilence and famine from all over? This isn't the first time there's been a pandemic. They just didn't call it that. And you think they ain't going to put something in the air later? And I, I, I really was beginning to think, now this ain't no conspiracy theory, but... I was beginning to think around November and December that these pharmaceutical companies must put somebody in the air to make us buy their uh, Benadryl and what have you because everybody running to the store trying to find something to take. They, 
but you're going to let that stop you from being a follower. Oh, you got to use common sense. And things have changed, and we cannot act like things have changed, but I tell you what, the church can only make it if we have followers of Christ. Not a fan. Not a fan. Not those that are just, now we fixing to eat. And, and, and amen. And, and let's, let, let's enjoy the fellowship. Cause, and y'all enjoy it because, look, down in East Texas, in Tyler, I done quit. I, I done quit all that feeding uh, <laughs> church folk. I, I, you, you, you come to our anniversary at homecoming, you're looking for something to eat. I, I, look, I done, I done quit all that. I done. You know, what I discovered, Jonathan, is that some people that will not give $10 in church will pay $10.50 for a chicken plate. So what I do is I have my folk donate the food and I sell it back to them. I, look, I ain't trying to mess up what y'all do here. If you want to give away, I'm just telling you what we do. Oh, you, you're going to donate that chicken? Good, sister, but I'll sell it back to you. Ten feet. Look here, I even have a family pack. I, I, I have a pack. Listen, you, uh, we'll feed a family of four for $21.50. That's a good bargain. Ain't going to get that nowhere else. You don't even have to stay and eat. I'll put it in to go. But matter of fact, I'd rather you not stay. Uh, uh, I, we put it in to go boxes and let you go. I raised $1,400 one Sunday. Some of y'all's ears went up like horses' ears when I said that. Because, because I knew that some folk were only there for the... F I had one sister, she, she used to... She used to come. She didn't come that often, but when she heard we were feeding, she'd call her children, grandchildren. All right, they feeding at the church today. Y'all going to church? And she'd bring all them rugrats in the church with white around their mouth, ready to. And I said then, okay, I'm going I'm, to I'm fix this. <laughs> and it's been successful ever since. <laughs> the difference between a fan and a follower. Now, if you're present this morning and, and, and you realize that you've been more of a fan, you come to church when things, when there's something happening. And some of y'all, when this month is over, you ain't going to. Unless you find another church having food. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are there those here that are members of Cedar Crest and you've not been faithful? You've been in and out. You've grown hot and cold. Then this is a good, as good a time to rededicate your life as any. If you're here this morning and you're not a Christian, Christ wants followers. The road gets rough. Things get tough, but God wants you to hang in there because he knows where he's taking you. I said he knows where he's taking you. So now as we stand to our feet, if there are those that have not accepted Jesus, will you come by faith repenting, confessing him as the son of God, and we'll take time to baptize you in water for the remission of your sins. Will you come right now? Someone needs prayer. Someone needs to be restored. This is the time. This is the place. This is the people. Will you come right now? We have come this far by faith. Oh, leaning on the Lord. Oh, trusting in his holy word. That's why we sing, oh, 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 can't turn around. We've come, we've come this far by faith. We've come.
come this far, we've come this far for by faith leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed, he's never failed me yet. That's why we sing, oh. celebrate God for the man of God. Didn't Dr. Bowger do a phenomenal job? Dr. Bowger, we thank you. That was an on-time word, uh, and uh, we, we, we will not be the same uh, as a result of this deposit. We were laughing a moment ago. Uh, we have a sister that's no longer with our church when, when I would preach sermons like that at the back door. She would say, preacher, you told the buck naked truth. <laughs> you told the buck naked truth. Uh, for the boundary, you preached the buck, you told the buck naked truth. The, tr the truth of God's word in a very practical, very meaningful way. And we thank you uh, for coming our way. He's going to be back at uh, 2 30. And so we invite you to come back and worship with us between feedings. If you want to go to the uh, the foyer, we've got some some a table set up. There may be some things there you want to take a look at, but we encourage you to do that. We're thankful for those who have responded to the preached word, and now we'll hear what the Lord has placed on their hearts. And following that, we will have our benediction. Uh, we'll ask Sunday. You mind doing our benediction for us? Yeah, we want him to come. It was Son of Cedar Crest. Glad to have him in the house. We're going to have him come and offer our benediction. Uh, but if you would also bless the meal. The responses to the message this morning come from the following. Even before the message was offered, Deborah Brager sent in a prayer request for Joe Brager. Joe Brager tuned in online. He's in the hospital for uh, treatment on his leg. And we want to extend prayers in that direction. Tino Flemings has recently moved into the area. Tino confessed sins and requests the prayers of the church. Thank you, brother. Larky Sloan confessed sins and also requests the, the prayers. She says to the church, I've sinned and I'm repenting of that sin. And I'm asking that my sins may be forgiven. I'm also asking for patience and strength. Hearing these, uh, these prayer requests, let's take these requests to the Father. Heavenly Father, we come to you as humbly as we know how, Lord. Thankful for this day that was not promised. But, Lord, we recognize that you are the maker of days, 
because you have made this joyous, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we have turned this corner on the first century of the Cedar Crest Church of Christ, Lord, allow us to look left and right, and as we see those who depart from Christ Jesus, allow us to step into this second century, Lord, empowered to do your will in your way. Now, Heavenly Father, for those who did not speak uh, or, or write a card, Lord, may you respond in your will and your way to that which is on their hearts. That as they depart this place, but never from your presence, Heavenly Father, they will draw closer to you. Heavenly Father, we ask that as we go further in the existence of the Lord's church, that we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Heavenly Father, now hear the words that come from our next brother. I saw one more son of Cedar Crest in the house. Let me see, where was he? Brother McClary. Wait, 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 can, can you come on down? Let us have a song by Brother McLaren, and then we're going to have a, the benediction by Brother Son. Amen. Come on up, Brother Ryan. I'm going to hear that. Ask everyone to go ahead and stand. When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, oh, we're going to sing. Hallelujah, sing hallelujah by and by hope and how the ransom singers will together that him. Oh, we're going to sing. We're going to sing hallelujah by him. Oh, you know what that all, oh, what job joy when we get Oh, you know we're going to rest. Church, say amen. amen. Um, we had a wonderful time today. Amen. It's always good to be back home. It's always good to be home. I got my sisters here. We travel all the way from Houston just to be with you today. We want you to know that we love you to see the Christ Church of Christ, Jonathan, and this church will always be in me and my sister's heart forever, the rest of our lives. We love you. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God in heaven, we come for you at this time. Father, we thank you for the many wonderful blessings, Father, you have bestowed upon us. Father God, we thank you for waking us up this morning and touching us with your finger of love. The Father awakened us out of our sleep, for there were many who did not wake up this morning, Father, but you chose us. You breathed into us, the Father, and you touched us, and you woke us up, and you gave us an opportunity to come here this morning, Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth. And oh, what a wonderful time we have had. Father God, we thank you for the participants. We thank you for not just the fans, but uh, uh, the followers of yours who have come this morning. We thank you for the effort that they put in, the Father, in praising you, your holy and divine name. Father, we thank you for the young men who led us in our songs and spiritual songs this month, Father. We thank you for the gifts that you bestowed upon these young men, Father. And the Father, we thank you, Father, for uh, uh, the audience who participated, the people who listened, who, who shouted, the ones who stood, the ones who clapped, all in enthusiasm, Father, because we are in the house and we know that you are here. Father God, we thank you for this great church. Father, let this church continue to be a beacon, as Brother Bowdry said, for the entire Church of Christ for the entire community, for the city of Dallas and the surrounding areas. Father, we thank you for the minister, Brother Jonathan Morrison, for his vision. 
May he continue to lead this church in the way that it should go, Father. May you grant him wisdom and knowledge. Give him courage to go forward in his ministry and bless him and bless his family. Bless the elders. Bless the leaders. Bless every member of this church. The Father God, and as we get ready to leave this place and go on to the next portion of the ceremonies that are planned for the day, as we go to our meal, Father, we, we, we ask that you bless the food, the hands that have prepared it, Father, and that it be received with thanksgiving, and that the fellowship be wonderful, that we be friendly with one another, and that we love each other, Father, and that we rekindle some old relationships and just love, 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 love. Father God, we love you and we adore you. We thank you, your holy and divine name. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Let the entire church say, amen.